Uh, very, a very warm good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome everyone who has already joined us. I can see the chat box is already blowing up. So welcome to the session, uh, make Google My Business work for you. Uh, so as, we may, as I did um, mention before, I'm being joined by my colleagues from Uganda and from Ghana. I will give them a few minutes just to introduce uh, you know, just welcome the SMEs and say a little bit um, something about the NORAD project, uh, the, NORAD, the, the NORAD program. So, uh, the program is brought to you by Africa 108, Google, and Digital Launchpad. So, let me take this opportunity uh, to welcome Eric from Ghana. Eric, welcome. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Evans. And uh, we are glad to join the training today as uh, Ghana. Um, my name is Eric Oziambo. I'm in Ghana. And we have a lot of SMEs. I can see them in the chat box. So this is a good opportunity to learn more about the GMB tool, which will help your business in terms of visibility. So if you have questions, just make sure you uh, put them in the chat box or you have them somewhere that you can share or ask to get clarification from Evans. Uh, thanks a lot, Evans. All right, so uh, let me also take this opportunity to welcome Sandra all the way from Kampala, Uganda, just to say hi and welcome SMEs from Uganda. Uh, welcome, Sandra. Uh, thank you very much, Evans. Um, to all the SMEs from Uganda, you're most welcome to today's session. Um, we pray that you take advantage of this session, learn a lot to how to make Google work for your business. Um, take advantage of the space that we've given um, comment with your questions if you need to understand a couple of things about how the program is going to run but yeah i'm really excited about what we are supposed what we're about to learn and thank you very much evans uh thank you so much sandra uh so welcome back so um i did mention that i also have my colleague uh, who are going to be our moderator for this session uh we have now ladies are joining us from addis ababa ethiopia we also have uh, be our moderator for this session. We also have Ora Joseph joining us from uh, Dar es Salaam. We also have, you know, our, uh, our colleagues from Kenya joining us. So thank you so much, guys, for joining. Uh, I will be your lead trainer, Evans Rabara. And as I did mention, the session is brought to you by Grow with Google. So Grow with Google basically is trying to uh, to help uh, people or SMEs to increase uh, to improve their skills. Uh, just improve their careers and well, as well as improve their, you know, their business. So allow me to share my screen. Allow me to share my screen. All right, so allow me to share my screen. It's going to take a little bit, five minutes. So meanwhile, uh, can you just introduce yourself? Let us know where you're joining us from. What is the expectation for uh, for this this training and just give me a thumbs up if you're able to see my screen if it is very clear uh, so that we proceed so let me see is it really clear so as the slides load let me welcome the SMEs that who have already joined us so we have Braco joining us for the training we also have uh, um, Yera joining us for the training. We also have Jacqueline Otoro saying good afternoon. We also have Meg Jackway saying good afternoon from Uganda. Thanks, thank you so much for creating time and joining the session. We have Mr. Henry joining us. Oh, it's 11 a.m. in Uganda. Thank you so much for joining us. We also have Kevin Ogosu also joining us from the Great Speed Enterprise. We also have Jeleta Mulatu joining us right here from Ethiopia. We also have, you know, Bernard Ofori joining us from Ghana. Uh, Richard uh, Obuku also joining us from River Poultry Farm. I'm, I'm really happy that, uh, that the text is really active and so many SMEs are joining. So without wasting much time, let's get into our topic of today, which is make Google my business work for you. 
And in this training, we have uh, pretty much three agendas that you're going to be looking at. First, we are going to be looking at how to discover Google My Business. For instance, if you go to a search engine and you type for uh, the name of the, uh, the name of the business, how do you identify in the search results that this is Google My Business and this is now the search result? Um, after looking at that, you're going to look at how to set up or how to get set up on Google My Business. So if you're not listed on Google My Business, we are going to take you through step by step on how you can have your business listed on Google or listed on maps and such so that when your potential customer is searching for your business is able to locate you. And we're also going to notice uh, that um, we are going to look at the various icons. For instance, if you have you are in the hostel business, there is usually some icon that is usually associated with hostels as well as poultry farms, schools and even government institutions. And then finally, we are going to look at how to create an engaging uh, GMB listing. So I will be using a lot of GMB because GMB is just an abbreviation of Google My Business. So I will be alternating between Google My Business and GMB. So if you look, uh, so if you look at the agendas that we have here, it's pretty much going to give you an idea of what you're going to be talking about today. So on to my very first uh, agenda, which is uh, discover Google My Business, and this brings me to my uh, my question. So can you find a pizza delivery near you, or can you find a fashion industry? near you or can you find a cafeteria near you so this question is just to help you identify the keywords that you can use when you're searching for a product online or if you want to search for a leather shoe or a leather product uh, near me for instance what are some of the keywords that i'm going to use when we are talking about keywords we are talking about terms that an internet user can use to search for that particular product. For instance, there's a keyword such as delivery, that is a keyword. Near me is also a keyword which is just depicting a place where I am based. For instance, if I'm interested in just buying a product near me, I'll use near me. So, most of the shoppers usually use keywords to get the product that they want. All right, so, when you're talking about, when you're talking about, so let us look at some of the keywords that have been used here. We have looked at pizza as one of the keywords. We have looked at delivery as one of the keywords. Takeaway could be one of the keywords. So when we're talking about keywords, keywords are important for every business as they help in driving targeted website traffic to your business. So if you're in, a, if for instance you have a website, you need to ensure that you use keywords that people are likely to use to look for your business. And these keywords, they usually change from uh, one category to another. So we have keywords that are majorly used on hospitality sector. We have keywords that are majorly used on manufacturing, for instance. We also have keywords that are being used on the service industry. And of course, you could, also, you could also use a number of tools to help you discover keywords that are being used in that industry and also some related keywords to that industry. So when you talk about keywords, these are just words and phrases that internet users type into the search box of a search engine. And when you talk about search engine, an example is Google and, uh, you know, and the sponsors for the program are Google. And of course, we have other search engine for 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 instance you can have been as another example of search engine but the most popular one is google so you know keywords are ideas and topics that define what your content is about in terms of search engine optimization there are words and they could be phrases as well so it could be one word or it could be phrase so phrase basically means uh, it could be more than one word, but the, uh, the, 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 they're talking about one, uh, the, like they mean one thing. So, for instance, you can talk about pizza and this pizza plus your location. So, we have pizza and the location, that is a phrase. 
So when this keyword, they define what the content you're searching for, and they could be used to conduct search when they use. Let us look at what is Google Maps or what is Map. So I'm pretty sure that you guys have used Map. And when you're talking about Google Maps, for instance, so let me just pause for a bit and uh, use uh, some of the SMEs. Uh, you know, let me just pause for a bit and just explain uh, what Google Maps are and how you can use Google Maps. So let me just share my screen. So let me just do a quick search here and uh, share my screen. Just share my screen, and uh, I want to look for. I want to look for. Uh, I want to look for, you know, uh, you know, cafeterias, cafeterias, uh, cafeteria, or cafes. Uh, I want to look for cafe in Accra, Ghana. Accra, in Accra, so in Accra, Ghana, for instance. When you do that, so this is how they appear on the map. Uh, there is Cafe Accra, there is, uh, you know, there is also, you know, uh, La Paz Mall. So when you look at this, this is basically Google Map. And when you view all, what you're going to see is the name of the cafeteria, the reviews that people have been able to give, uh, to, to, give the, uh, to give it, and also it uh, the cafeteria has indicated whether it is a dine-in or a takeaway or a delivery and if you look at all the cafeterias that are spread around here they are having something that looks like a cup so that is like the icon that uh, demarcate that these are uh, that these are um, caf uh, these are ca uh, cafeterias or these are you know where you can go and grab a quick coffee if you use uh, if you look at pharmacies for instance i can say pharmacies pharmacies in Kampala for instance in Kampala, in Kampala, you're going to realize uh, Kampala. This uh, so the telling is uh, is a little bit of Kampala. For instance, if you look at when you come to pharmacies in Kampala, this is how they appear in the maps, and it's telling you that we have Ecofarm uh, Ecofarm Pharmacy, and this Ecofarm Pharmacy they are still working, it's open, because they've indicated the opening hours and the closing hours, and they've indicated their in-store shopping. And if you look at the icon, it has, if you look at the icon, it's different from the icon you saw from the cafeteria. So let me move away and look at, uh, you know, leather, leather shops, leather shops, leather shops, shops, near me so for for instance i'm in addis i will say it, let the shops near me and it will just bring you know such results in the areas where i am so if you look at the leather shop where i am right now there is sheba leather shop and it's located in piazza and they're currently open and in, it is an in-store shopping if you look at hilton leather shop products uh, it's telling me that it's open now and they're going to close at seven. And also, if I look at, you know, crafted uh, in Ethiopia and all that. So that is what I wanted to just uh, explain to you guys so that you can have a deep understanding about what maps are and how can you use map as a business owner to increase your visibility, Right, so when you're talking about MAP, we are basically talking about a web-based service that provides detailed information, region and sites around the world. So Google Maps also offers satellite and street views or location. So of course for the MAP, so we have a web-based service and of course, and also we have the app. You can have uh, the MAP app, uh, the MAP app. So uh, let us take a few minutes and look at, you know, why it's very important for you to connect with your customers why it's very important for you to connect with your customers in the moment that matters so when you search for a business near you it comes up with a list of suggestions so google suggests places customers might like 
in a map based on the search words and the search history. So remember, when you search for a term, the results that you're going to get will be based on the search terms that you used. So Google Maps uses information from your device and other Google products to display places uh, you might like. So we have a whooping 75% of smartphone owners turn to Google search in the moment of need. So I'm also in this statistic. So basically when I want to know more about a product or you know about a place, I go to my phone. Because right now I even have my phone right here with me. If I want to do something, I quickly go to my um, to my phone and switch uh, switch on my internet and quickly do a search or just just do uh, you know a quick query about the information that I want. And this number is increasing year by year. And we also have thirty percent of all mobile searches are related to location. So for instance, if I want to go for a meeting and I don't have the car with me, all I do is request for a ride or request for a Uber. So when, when, when I'm requesting for a Uber, I'll have to indicate where I am, the location where I am, and I have to indicate where I want to go to. So when the Uber guy gets this request, he'll be able to know that I am in, I'm around, you know, Aratkilo or I'm around Kebena, so that he will just come directly to where I am and go, and that is how maps are very, very important. They locate you where you are. And even if you are in the fourth floor, they'll be able to know, they'll be able to, uh, so it will it just pin the exact location where you are, the longitude and the latitude of where you are. 67% of those who use Google Maps prefer app. So the information appears on desktops, laptops, and even tablets. So let's take a few minutes and a moment just to, you know, just explore the benefits of Google Maps, for instance. So Google Maps, it helps mark your location. You get an exclusive online presence that allows or that shows where your business is based. So remember, having a brick and mortar, you know, location is equally important because people will need to verify, you know, if people will need to verify your location to just to confirm whether you are a, legit, a legitimate business. Of course, you know, for, for guys who are working online, you might not have an office or somewhere, but it's equally important that you directly map where your business are. So this is very important for your local shoppers who will be walking into your store to, uh, you know, to ask you questions and to you know, buy your products. Also, you need to mark your business, uh, you know, what maps help you, it makes your business more discoverable, more visible. So it helps customers learn about your business online through the geographical relevance. And one of, you know, later on, you're going to look about Google My Business. Within Google My Business, there is the part where you specifically state where your business is, and then it's linked to the map. When you do that, when you do that, it will directly point to where your business is and even the, uh, the geographical location. So when somebody is doing some search, it will be displayed also according to where you are. That is why uh, when the crawlers are, are going through the information, they also bring uh, display information according to the regions, especially if you use a region as a keyword. Also, one of the, the benefit of map is you get directions. So you get directions to uh, so that they can find you. So uh, so what it does, it offer Google, uh, so Google map offers directions to people who wish to visit your office and a store. So smartphone, uh, so smartphone in many cases is the device of choice when you're doing all this. So when you want to ask for direction, you use your smartphone. Uh, you know, when you, you know, when you want to just, uh, when you want to do a switch, uh, a switch, uh, like a quick search, you use your smartphone. And also what, you, what Google Maps usually provide 
it also provides us or it gives the customers uh, to, uh, you know so uh, you know it it also has an interface where customers are able to leave reviews they're able to just do some ratings they're able to you know just you know take photos and also just uh, you know the information based on you know on your map like what you've just seen in the in uh, an example of the business that we, we that i've just shown you there was a place where people people left reviews there was a place where you could see the photos the front the front uh, the front side of the shop and much more so let us look at how you can conduct you know how you can use map to conduct you know searches using map so uh let, let me let me also just uh and, uh, and I'm happy that I did three searches, and from those three searches, you are able to see something that looks like what you currently see. So with maps, you can find local business, you can view maps, and you can also get direction. So maps help you to be discovered globally. So you know we are in a, we are in an era where uh, you also need to uh, you know get the word out outside there that you are doing this kind of business and that you are, you know, even guys who are living in, you know, outside your country or outside Africa would also sort for your services or you for your products, especially if you are in the export industry and people need to see your product so that they can buy, they can buy, all you need to do is ensure that that product is shipped to them or airlifted to where they are. So you can search nearby, you can also get directions from map, and you can also save places. So remember when, you, when we did some quick searches, we were, you know, we had some icons that look like that. And, uh, you know, and we also have, especially the ones that were linked with phone number, you could see something that looks like, uh, like the call icon. All right, so let me ask you. So let's see how you can search and choose a business near me with Google Maps. You know, search and choose a business near me with Google Maps. So, uh, for instance, let me use a, a, you know, a local example here, uh, just a local example here, just a local example here, a local example. So, for instance, we can try, uh, you can try, uh, let me just use a local example here so that uh, we see how we can use a search. So just give me a, a few minutes to pull it. Just give me a few minutes to pull it. So we looked at leather shop near me. All right. So I want us to use a local example, search for a local business near me. So what I'll do, I will assume that I'm a tourist. I didn't really know. I didn't really know this, uh, this, this, you know, this area. I will say, so I've just landed into Bole International Airport and I need a place to stay. I will just come and say, you know, affordable, affordable hotels in or affordable hotels near me. When I do that, this is what, what appears. So there is going to guest house, there's Oasis Hotel, there is a senior guest house, and so much more. That is if I didn't really know the place. But assuming that I knew a place and I want to look at, I'm searching for Addis View, Addis View Hotel. Addis View Hotel. So when you search for Addis View Hotel, and you see something that looks like this. So this is Google My Business. So within Google My Business, you are able to find a lot of information when just within a short period of time. You're able to click onto the website and it takes you to the website and read more about Addis View. You're able to, you know, you know, request for direction. You can also make calls directly from here. And you can see, I can see uh, 32 people have left the uh, reviews uh, on Addis View. And I can just say, what are they really saying? What are what are they saying about Addis View? So it invokes some 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 curiosity in you, so that you can go and start looking at, aha, uh -huh, what are they really saying about Addis View? Uh, let me see. So somebody saying, absolutely as outstanding hotel, perfectly located in the city Addis. So you know, if I see that, I will take a step and go into the website 
and do the booking. So we have a lot of positive reviews here. And when you're doing that, and remember, the map is here, it has been linked to the map and the call is here. And uh, what I can also do, I can also do just a quick, uh, so best hotels, best hotels, hotels in, uh, let me say, uh, Accra, for instance, Accra, for instance. So when I do that, it's going to give me a list of hotels. Uh, there's an AD there that shows that, okay. Ah, uh, so, so, uh, uh -huh. right. So once I do that, what I can do, I can go to maps, on maps, on maps, I'll be able to, I'll be able to, so all this, so on map, I'll be able to, uh, no, just a minute, just a minute, so we are looking for best hotels in Accra, and this is what you have. So you'll have a list of hotels, you know, Kempiski all the way, and you can also click on, on all, and then it takes you to view, and you can pretty much see everything on it. And you can see it's been linked to the map, the pricing are there, and everything are there. So uh, let's go back to our slide. Let's go back to our slide. So as I, as, I, as I did mention in the beginning, so if you have any question, kindly feel free to interject. Uh, we have moderators who are attending to the questions and I will also pause as well to address your question. So you are in good hands. And of course, I'm joined by Sandra, who is also here with me. I'm also joined by, uh, by Eric. And uh, you know, we're going to work together just to ensure that we address all your questions regarding the program and regarding what we are discussing now so we want to see how you can make your listing you know your business for this case stand out so to make your business stand out you know we are going to look at what are some of the activities that you can do to make your listing stand out so so that you make your listing a completely a complete one and uh, and, and, and a listing that when somebody uh, found your listing online it gets intrigued and would love you Will likely leave a comment or leave a review or share your product so if you look at the images that we have there so there are a number of factors which affect whether we choose if a business is trustworthy or not especially in this digital era we have a lot of a lot of information online some of them are fake some of them are real so you as a person who is doing the shopping have you know you need to take a step of just going deeper and further just to confirm if the business that you are looking for online is indeed genuine and legitimate. So first, you need uh, you need an image. So you also need to ensure that the image is the image of your store, for instance, the front image of your store, maybe with your banner, with your the name of the business uh, written on it, and the image needs to be. HD, so image, see what it looks like. Also the reviews, what people are saying about your business is very, very crucial. And the more the reviews you have, the better for you as a business. And moreover, if the positive reviews, then wow, I'm telling you, you'll be having a lot of referrals. Uh, like in Kenya, for instance, uh, if you look at uh, so let me let me let me in Kenya let me just uh, look for another uh, let me quickly show you like in Kenya uh, there is um uh, let me show you Garden Mall for instance you'll be amazed at how many reviews they have so if you look at uh, Garden Mall for instance uh, it's called Garden. Um, so there is a, there is a mall along Thika Road called Garden or oh, Garden City, Garden City, Garden City, Garden City, Garden City Mall. So if you do this, are you guys seeing the kind of reviews that, that Garden City has? Seventeen thousand one hundred and twenty-three reviews, and all these reviews, three quarters of them are positive reviews, positive reviews. So this one. So when you have these reviews, it means 
the reviews are the ones that are doing uh, you know, uh, the giant work for you. So the reviews are the ones that are, that are bringing uh, you know, customers to you because people are really confident in the mall because what people are saying, uh, experience of uh, people who have actually gone there. So the, uh, the more reviews, the better. So let me read uh, maybe some of the reviews uh, that, are, um, that we have here. So somebody saying, Wesley saying, so Garden City has been my only favorite place to refresh my memory. It has an ample parking lot, ample spaces for sitting. It uh, diligently serves people who are driving, footing in a fairly manner. So, you know, that review basically tells you that if you go to the Garden City, you are likely to get a parking space. If you go to a Garden City, you are likely to be received well by the guards. At, uh, by the guards. If you go to the Garden City, you are likely to get everything within under one roof, which is. Uh, which is a good, which is a good review. So, so I wanted to show you how you know reviews are very, very crucial. Reviews are very, very crucial. So, if you are a business owner, ensure that uh, you know your friends, you know, uh, you know your customers leave a review how they feel about the business, so that it keep on, you know, it keep on attracting more and more people. So, uh, going back to our slide. Going back to our slide, and we were looking at, uh, you know, how reviews are very important. So we are just looking at how you can make your listing stand out. And we are talking about reviews. And uh, so you also need to ensure that the address. So the address is where, or it is a place that, you know, that actually exists. So if you have a physical location, you need to include it. And for you to be exact, for instance, you can say, um, my business is located in Bole, so that is first. Within Bole, we are somewhere around Bole Medinale or Edna Mall, or within Edna Mall building, fourth floor, room number 20. That is the exact description of where you are. For, when you are in Kenya, for instance, you can say, our location is in Westlands, and in Westlands, we are located in, uh, in maybe you know, Mutiti Street, Rainbow Towers, fourth floor. Or if you're in Accra, you can also do that. So you need to ensure that you mention the building, the place, and the room, and the floor if possible. Also include your contact details. So in case you need to make or cancel a reservation, contact is very important. Uh, so it has happened to me. So there's a time I booked a flight. After booking a flight and for some reason, I had to, uh, you know, something came up and I had to cancel. So what I needed to do is go back to, you know, go back to the Kenya Airways, uh, you know, website, look for the contact. After looking for the contact, and I, and I had to call them. So if you are in the hotel industry or any other industry, you really need to leave your phone number. It's very, very important. So phone numbers, people can call you for inquiries, uh, you know, just to... You know, just to confirm a, a few details about your business. Also, you need to indicate your opening house. So, when to visit it if they decide to. For instance, if you're working from 8 to 5 p.m. and somebody uh, wanted a delivery pass that time. So, somebody needs to know your opening hours and closing hours and if you're working on holidays or not. So, or also if you're working on weekends. So, that needs to be indicated within google my business so that when i want to order i know i can make my order between 8 to 5 pm and you can also decide you can also increase you know link it with the website so website is very important because if somebody wants to know more about your business remember uh, you know google my business profile uh, will just give a summary of what you guys are offering. But if I'm interested in your details and I want to learn more about that particular product and have to click onto your website, and what it will do, it will be helping to drive traffic from Google My Business onto your website. And from your website, now I'll have to sit down and look at your, your portfolio, you know, the services you're offering, and so much more. So ultimately, being visible on Google Maps also create more complete listing and profile for your business. And in fact, 29% of customers are more likely to consider purchasing from uh, purchasing from your business 
purchasing from a business with a complete listing or a detailed profit. So if you're listed on Google, uh, your business is complete, you're more likely to be considered genuine reputable. You're more likely to attract location visits and you're more likely to end up with a purchase. Because remember, as a business person, the ultimate goal is for you to sell. All right, so let us look at Google My Business. So here now is where now the rubber meets the bullet. So what do we mean by this Google My Business? So I will be mentioning a lot of GMB, GMB. So GMB is a free. So put the word free in bold. So if somebody comes to you and sells you GMB, then it means that guy is a fraudster. So it is an absolutely free and easy to use tool for business and organization to manage their online presence across search, which is Google. So search and map. So remember, search and maps, they're like twin brothers or twin sisters. They go together. So normally when you do a search, there's a place for all. There's a place for, uh, you know, place for map. And then there's a place for news. So all that. So what crawlers or bot does, it gives you information related to pictures, videos, maps, and even news. So Google My Business has features including adding business name, location, opening hours, and monitoring and replying. So I'm, 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 I'm going to pause and just show you where you can add this uh, business hours, location hours, and all that. So if you verify and edit your business information, you can both help customers and business to find you. So when you're searching for local information, you are 33 percent you know 33 percent of people look for business hours you know when when are you actually operating 32 percent look for location and we have another 27 percent looking for review so are uh, people actually talking about you so if people are not talking about you it means it never happened so uh, people need to document uh, whether they have been there you know whether they've bought a product from there you know whether they've taken a picture from there they actually need to uh, you know uh, to document that so let us look at you know how to make most of google my business so before i go into that let me just show you you know uh, you know a, a sample profile of a google of my, a google my business that we help listed we listed uh, we help listed the business we verified the business after verifying the business we uh, we claimed it after claiming it, we gave the ownership to uh, we gave the ownership to uh, to the business. So I will show you the backend. For instance, I just want to show you the backend so that you familiarize you you know you, you know you familiarize yourself with what you expect when uh, you know when when you'll be adding this detail. So I will take an example of a Google My Business. So let me share my screen so that you can see. So the backend looks like this. So these are business that I've been able to, so these are some of the business that we've been able to, uh, to list. So for instance, let me take, uh, so this is a bank for instance, these are that. So this is Dash and Bank. So when you're listed on Google My Business, this is how the backend will look like. So here, there is the home. In the home bit, this one now, you see you can create a post from here you can create a post from here you can add an offer from here you can also keep updating people with the new product you know if you're replenishing replenishing your stock you can also create events and you can also add you can also add products so remember you can also choose the category and you can also there's a, the bid for price so because i'm in ethiopia it's saying etb if you're in kenya it will be it will be in Kenyan shillings. Uh, if you are in uh, Kampala, it will be in UJX. But if you are in uh, Accra, I'm not sure the currency you guys are using, it could be dollars. And if you give a, a, like a brief description of that product there, and you know, and then you put a button here. 
Shop now, you see this one, order online, buy, learn, get an offer. That is also, that is on homepage. You can also, I've shown you how you can do the post. So remember, you can post, you can also edit the info. So when you have access to this page here, you are like the owner. You have the absolute right of editing pretty much everything. You can, you can edit the name, the location, the opening hours, the phone numbers, the phone numbers, and all that. And you can also look at the insight. So insight is basically how your page is doing. In the last one month or in the last three months, you can come and, so if you look at this, it's telling us that in the last one month, a total of 21,313 people made searches. And when they made searches, what are some of the keywords that they used? Those are some of the things that Insight will give you. And then you come here, you come here and it will tell you that in the last one month, a total of 11,000 people did the search and a total of 18,000, you know, 18,600 looked for it on the map. And you see this, you're able to see, you know, 21 visited the website because it will be linked to the website, it directed to the website, 92 requested for direction. So remember, this could be converted, easily converted into patient. And we have 114 people making calls. And it's telling you that all these people, they came from Addis suburb, for instance. You see, you can see Bulele, Kotebe, Lideta, Akake Kaliti, uh, you know, and you know, a total, uh, you know, a total of 140 calls were made, and so much more. And you could also, it could also give you keywords that were used. How cool is that? How cool is that? So, uh, let me go back to the slides. Let me go back to the slides. So now we were looking at, you know, how you can make most of, you know, how you can make most of. Uh, uh, Google My Business. So with GMB account, you can get more than just a business listing. You see, most people see it as it's just a listing, just a listing. There is so much you can do to it. Actually, you can do a lot of digital marketing from here. So your free business listing let you easily connect with customers across Google search and map. By listing your business on Google Map, you are getting an exclusive online presence showing where your business is based, and this means people get to know you, right? You can use Google My Business to attract customers with your business profile. So in Google My Business, you, you, you add a cover photo and you also put a logo, you will also put a, you know, a profile. So you can post photos and offers to your profile to show what makes your business unique. It can also give you know, customers a reason to choose you. So remember, just like, you know, um, so I like to use, uh, you know, I like to use this example so much because it is a, it, it is a, a real life experience. So if you're quoting a lady, for instance, and you have, you know, more than five, uh, you know, men, you know, eyeing for one lady, you need to stand out. So here is a case whereby you need to stand out. So you need to smell nice. You need to dress well, you know. And that is the case with Google My Business. You need to post photos and maybe clear photos to, you know, to, to drive people. You also need to give customer, you know, a way to reach you. So what Google My Business does, it gives you more than one way of reaching the customers. It gives you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, you can call through Google My Business, you can message through Google My Business, and you could, uh, and you can also reach your, you know, you reach your business, you know, your, your customers through reviews. So by calling, messaging, or leaving reviews, it gives you more than one way of reaching your customers. You can also see how your customers connect with your business. That is really very important. At least you see how they're connecting with your business. What, you know, 
what action are they taking when they are on your Google My Business profile or when they are on your, when or when they are on um, uh, on your on your website? Is it clicks? Are they clicking? Are they booking? Are they following? Are they you know making actual uh, purchase if it is uh, in an e-commerce website? And by the way, uh, you know COVID has made e-commerce to be very common. Uh, you find that a lot of purchases are, are, are being made through e-commerce platforms. Uh, you know, you know, and that is how. You could also, you know, link Google My Business with your e-commerce profile so that when somebody searches for your business, it directs them to your e-commerce website. Once they're in your e-commerce website, all they need to do is browse for a few minutes looking for the products. Once they've gotten that product, they add it into the cart. Once that is done, they check out and boom, you have your money. All you need to do is to ship, you know, that product to the client. So now, let us look at you know uh, let us look at uh, you know how you can stay competitive using google my business so with google my business it can help you make informed marketing decision based on customer feedback so for instance with google my business if you've realized that uh, you know once you once you uh, once your business was listed you've only gotten three calls or you've gotten 100 calls it's going to help you to know that okay uh, i have 100 calls what do i need to do to increase these numbers or what do i need to do to convert these 100 calls into paying clients you can also learn from the success of others as well as the mistakes that others did especially from your competitors you can also understand what your customers want so you might be in an area where you're selling a product and for some reason people are not buying and you're wondering what is happening in this locality you know you need uh, the grace of god for things to change it could be what you're selling is not what they want and google my business can help you with that and you can also research and identify how to stand out from the crowd what can you do differently from your competitors and you can also discover industry trends and customer preferences so remember we are in the fashion industry where when you know last week one trend was very popular it has changed you know uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed that that you know there are times when you know teenagers usually like trousers that are torn you know you know they tear some parts and you know some of them like skinny you know skinny jeans so those are some functions that as a person you need to know what do things like and how do i really conform uh, you know you know conform to that so let me let me take a few minutes and uh, see if we have any question for me to uh, to 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 uh, to if i have any question for me to to ask uh, so I'm really happy that it's really going very well. Uh, I'm really happy that it's really, really going very well. So if there is any question that I need to attend to, I will pause and attend to it. But as it sounds, it seems Orwa now uh, are really doing, uh, Orwa now Benji are really doing an awesome job just to engage SMEs and also Ah, this is pretty awesome. The, tech, the chat box is blowing. This is, this is really awesome. So what you can do is just to ensure that you tag and you say something about this session using Grow with Google. Just say, I attended a training that was being done by African on 8 and the lead trainer was Evans Rabare and he talked and he talked, uh, you know, he was talking about Google My Business and how Google My Business can help an SMEs uh, with their discover discoverability as well as their visibility. So let's try to you know you know share this on our Facebook page, on our Twitter, on our LinkedIn, and all that. So if there is any question for me, let me move to our you know let me move to our second agenda which is how to get set up on Google My Business. So, you know, we want to get you listed on Google My Business. How do we do that? 
Right. So remember we said Google My Business is an absolutely free tool that you can use. You know, that you can, you know, that you, so you, what, you, what, what you can do is, once you get listed on, you know, on Google My Business, it will be very easy for customers to, to find you on search and on map as well. So we have four main steps that we usually use to get you listed on Google My Map. But for this particular case, now all Benji, Oroa, you know, they are going to share a form that you're going to fill. Once you fill that form, we will use that form to get you listed on Google My Business. So first step is you, you create your Google My Business by going to uh, business.google.com. Once you are there, uh, it will, you know, it, it, so, so there's an interface that will come where it will ask you for your name, you know, your address, your phone number, and all that. Step two, you need to verify your business. Verify your business is where well now you need to ensure that the details that you're adding are absolutely correct. You complete your profile, you know, by adding, by adding, or you by adding, you can add, you know, your profile pictures. You can add, you know, your back, you know, cover photo. Uh, you can also include your phone number. Just ensure that everything is complete, and then populating your listing. So populating your listing is where now you add additional information, uh, information such as opening hours, closing hours. You add category, photos and all that so it has it has four steps so first as i did mention the first one is you know creating your uh, you know you know create your google my business and the first one is you go to business.google.com or you, you can do that through the app so if already so if you've already signed up you simply log into your google my business account and you follow the steps that I'm going to show you bit by bit. So the first one is, this is the first step. It will ask you for what is the name of your business. That is the first step. There, you have to put your, uh, the name of your business the way, you know, maybe the way you register it or the way it's appearing on, you know, some of your social media profiles so that it matches. So if it was maybe, you know, if it was uh, John's poultry on Facebook, kindly in, just write the same way it is here. If it was John's poultry on Twitter, that is the same name you use here. Don't you don't um, use a different name. Just use the same name. Once you've done that now, you choose the category. So you could be, you know, a hairdresser, florist, or a grocery. You choose that category. So category will make your business unique. So remember, you could have, uh, you know, you know, your business could have a same name with another business, but that other business is another sector. So the category will help uh, make your business more unique. Then let us look at what you need to do for customers to, you know, to, to, uh, to, to reach you and contact you. So it will ask you, do you want to add a location where customers can visit or a store or an office? And you put yes. So if you put yes, it will be capturing your information. So information is optional, but it's very useful for me. Uh, for me, I would, I would put I would I would, I would, I would um, put it to be like a must for you to put a location. So, so even though customers may not be able to visit you now, but that, that doesn't mean they will not want to visit uh, visit you in the future. So, he, the location is very very important. So, once you've done that, now you choose a way to verify. You know choose a way to verify. So there are various ways you can choose to verify. So there's a one through, uh, there's one through a post mail which takes long, but for this case, you can reach out to a Google, uh, a Google My Business verified or featured partner. So we have, you know, a lot of featured partners. Uh, Opera Mini is one of them, but for our case, you are lucky 
Africa on Net is also, uh, you know, uh, you know, a Google My Business featured partner. You reach out to them and you get verified, right? So once you you know once your listing is verified, you go ahead to ensure that your profile is complete by adding your address, opening hours, contact details, visual content, which is photos, as well as your logo. So now let us look at, you know, what are some of the benefits of a complete Google My Business listing? Benefit of a complete, uh, you know, Google My Business listing. So if you're having a complete Google My Business listing, it means you are two times, you know, seven, you know, 2.7 more likely to be considered reputable. 70% more likely to attract visits. So people come into your store and 50% more likely to lead to a purchase. So we have incomplete, li uh, incomplete listing and a complete listing. So a complete listing is the one that will give you all this. So reputability, location visits, and sales. So let us look at how you can populate your listing. So first, you need to add photos, HD photos, clear photos. So keep adding photos, posts, and offers to your listing so that the information stays fresh and relevant. Update your opening hours. Also indicate days that you're not working. And also need to keep the content fresh and engaging. So let us look at how you can add photos. So, so there are several types of photos that you can add on your listing. One is logo. So the logo that you'll be adding here should be consistent to the one that is it's on your website in terms of uh, you know the clarity, the colors that have been used, and even the size. Also include a cover photo, a photo that best describes your business sector. So the cover photo should be a photo that describes the sector where you are. Also, you can add a different uh, you know additional photos. So. You can add different photos to highlight features of your business that customer will consider when making the purchasing decision. So, and also, so um, you can also update uh, your hours. So you need to update, you know, opening hours. Considering that right now we have COVID, so if we have updates around COVID that you want your, you know, your your, your consumers, your customers to know, more, or maybe if you've changed your opening hours due to, you know, due to COVID, or if you reduce your capacity due to COVID, you need to clearly state that. So in the info section, you can add hours, and you can also make your, you know, your. your Customers are aware if there is a new business hours or if there is a temporary closure due to COVID or something like that. So let us look at how you can keep your content fresh. You need to you need to update opening hours. That is how you can keep your you know your content fresh. You need to uh, use attributes to highlight. You need to uh, use attributes to highlight, you know, serve, you know, service options. You can also add, you can also post to your profiles. You can on, you can also turn on messaging, especially on the app. So in the messaging is where people will be just be leaving you, uh, you know, uh, we call it DM. So they'll be leaving you direct messages, and you're able to accept them, and you're able to reply immediately. So ensure that uh, if a message has been sent to you, uh, you know, take an action immediately. You also need to edit your business description, you know, hours and service disclaimer. You also need to utilize Google Trends. So what Google Trends help us, they help us to discover keywords that are being used in our various countries. And you can also highlight temporary closure. And the best part also with Google My Business, you can also add call to action button. And right now also because, you know, we also have COVID here with us, you can, you can also keep encouraging your customers to stay safe, 
stanis, uh, you know, sanitize and keep distance. So those are some of the things that you can add just to keep your content fresh. And with Google My Business also, you can also create a website from Google My Business. And basically what you do is, your website will be created based on the pictures, based on the information that you've provided. So having a professional website is really, 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 really important. Very, very crucial. So it is a key tool for driving sales. So nearly 70% of consumers state that they are more likely to buy from a business that has a website over the one that has none. So if you don't have a website, Big Google My Business gives you the opportunity of having a professionally designed website. So the, why is it important for us to have a website? Here are three reasons why you need to have a website. There is that aspect of first impression counts. First impression. So people like to read reviews about businesses and scope them out before visiting. Having a website allows you to showcase your business and brand to customers before they visit. It also enables them to make a judgment, an informed judgment. If you don't have a website, people are less likely to visit your store. If you don't have a website, however, the site should provide a positive impression. So if you have a website, I should look at your website and go, wow, because I look at the pictures, especially if it is an iterate joint. You know, I will look at, uh, you know, I will look at the picture and look at a, a, like a nice picture of, a, 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 you know, a boiled chicken or a roasted chicken or a well or, or, you know, you know, some stew or something. So the pictures will really give me the impression so that I will easily make an adjud uh, the judgment of coming to your, to your, to your joint and enjoy this too. Also having a website, people don't have a wind, you know, don't you know, don't window shop like they used to. So I remember when I was young, I could go to a market and walk from this other side to this other side, just walking and looking at you know clothes. You look at this, you leave this, you leave that, and with that you are window shopping. So right now that that one is being done on the website. So fewer people shop on high street than before. So having a website enables you to sell to customers to market yourself to audiences, and you can also provide information about your product, catalog, prices, location, and if you have, you know, if you have business ethos and different mantras, you know, you know, you know, like having a mission, a vision, something like that. And also not having a website. So if your business then have a website, chances are you're losing on revenue are so high you're likely to miss out on online revenue and advertising. Also, if customers can find you online, how will they know that you exist? So website helps you with creating an awareness, with the visibility and just building trust. So using a free website builder tool, it's simple, you can use your business details on Google My Business account all you need is to sign up for free and then within a few minutes you have your website and this is how to get started so you'll have to put you know in the business name the opening hours you can it will also capture some few details and also you can add action you know call to action button and there you go you have your website so let us look at how you can use google my business app to manage your listing so uh, if you notice, so the app, it's, the, the app is it's, it's, it's lighter and it's, it's really easy to use. Uh, you can, you know, you can post just from your phone. Uh, you can re you reply to the messages from your phone and you can also look at your insights directly. Let me pause and see if we have some questions for me to reply to. Do we have some questions for me to answer? Do we have some question for me to answer? Uh, so I can see Dory saying, uh, so Dory's, uh, uh, so perpetual, uh, just uh, so I can see Agritech member solution. 
saying thank you to Pew Sorono, uh, Doris Deku from Ghana. Thank you for joining. I can see, uh, you know, Benedict uh, also joining. So Benedict is from Jolly. So Jolly is an agro-food processing company providing high quality organic and adulterated well packaged oil, uh, packaged pa uh, oil palm uh, derivatives produce under clean and hygienic condition per, feed, uh, per FDA standard. Thank you so much for that elaborative description. So when you're reading it, you, 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 you have a picture of what Jolly Food, uh, Jolly Agro Food is. Thank you so much. Um, just to sample a few, I can see, you know, uh, Akafola TV saying, please, how can I be known in the corporate industry as a language consultant? How can I be known as a language consultant, uh, as a, you know, how can I be known in the corporate industry as a language consultant? This is very, this is, this is a really, really, really good uh, question. And it boils down to the visibility, the awareness creation, and Google My Business can help us with that. And once you get listed, you'll be doing periodic posts. And, uh, you know, uh, and this post, you know, of course, Google My Business is linked with other platforms. And people will be seeing the kind of activities that you do, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, activities that uh, you're you are involved in and more and more people will start engaging you so the first step of people knowing you is creating awareness the visibility because you could be a good consultant but if people do not really know uh, or people do, do not know what people are saying about you or some of the you know um, consultation works that you've done you might not be known outside so keep the question coming. Thank you so much for that wonderful question. So uh, let me move to our final agenda, which is uh, uh, creating an engaging Google My Business listing. So how do you make your listing stand out? First, you need to add an engaging photography. So here is where if you don't have, if your phone do not have a good camera this one now you also you might need to uh, get a photographer to get for you a good picture and remember picture sometimes uh, speaks louder than words Some, somebody could just look at a picture and uh, and just makes a decision very fast you also need to create an engaging post a post that will likely to invoke some form of feeling and somebody will retweet back reply to you give you leave a review or you know leave an emoji or something like that you could also engage with customers so engaging with customers in the sense that when they send an so when they send when they leave a review you take a few minutes or you respond back immediately just encouraging them uh, and encouraging them uh, telling them you uh, thank you for taking your time for leaving the review we appreciate uh, you appreciate you and you know we encourage you to come back so in that you'll be appreciating your customers as well as encouraging them to come to make more sales and you can also leverage on the inside so remember when you were discussing about google my business we discussed about insights, you know, the calls people have made, you know, the inquiries people have made, uh, you know, traffic, how many people, uh, the search terms that people have used. So you really need to leverage on those insights. And those insights can actually help you to make an informed decision. Also, let us just quickly look at how you can, you know, uh, you know, the kind of photos that you can be adding. So, so ensure that the photos that you're taking are clear so there is the lighting aspect so lighting make sure your image is well lit and the subject matter is clearly visible not covered by shadows or darkness or you know some marks or creases make sure that the light is coming from behind the camera directed towards what you're taking a photo of to do this, I just, uh, you know, I just suggest investing in some lighting equipment. So there are a lot of, you know, 
LED lights available to buy from. So having a lighting at your disposal enables you to make or to have a more flexible, uh, you know, to have a more flexible over where and when you can take the photos. So if you're taking the photos outdoors, for instance, you know, outdoors there is light, so you might not need to invest in that. Make sure the sun is behind you as a light source. So otherwise, it will blur the camera and block your subject matter. Let us look at the focus. So when taking photos, try to avoid blurring the shot. This is easier to do nowadays as most of the smartphones and, and the digital cameras autofocus on the image. So there can be a delay or, you know, on these devices. However, you need to ensure that you focus on the image so as to get the HD or quality picture that you want. Then there is the editing. So of course with the editing we have, um, within the phone you can edit, but, out, but also we have you know, things like Photoshop, Illustrator that you can use just to do the, uh, the editing. So editing, you, so it will help with filtering, you know, also, also editing softwares from your phone as well as you know, the, just the ones that I've, I've just mentioned. So there is also editing softwares available for you to use on your computer. So that is why in the, fun, in the fashion industry, for instance, the pictures that they usually post are clear HD pictures. Pictures that are well done, good lighting, good focus. And that is what is going to, uh, to, to, to give you results. If you try to put, uh, to, to put a blank picture and you want to compare yourself with your competitor who is putting HD clear pictures, trust me, your competitor will be getting a lot of customers as compared to you. So framing, so, so you need to consider what can be seen in your photo. So what is in the background might not be what you need. So is that, you know, if, if there is any interference with the image or is there anything in front of the subject matter that shouldn't be there, you try to remove it, you know, and then remain with the, uh, with the, with the, with the subject matter. So now let us look at, you know, how to post pictures. What is, what are, how should you post pictures? So we have the exterior, the exterior view. So the exterior view is the outside view. You need to post pictures of the outside view. Also, you need to go inside and post pictures of how the interior view is. So in the interior views, that is where you're going to be having, you know, your employees, you're going to be having your, you know, uh, your furnitures, uh, you know, and all that. So you need to ensure that all that is also captured. And now there's the virtual tour and the street view. The virtual tour and the street view. So, and once you do all this, somebody will have a rough idea of, you know, what kind of business is this? So he's been able to see how, you know, your front door looks like, how your interior view looks like, and how the street view also look like, and having like a wholesome picture of what kind of business you have. So, First, in creating and engaging photos, you need to add a title. So the title could be four to five words, and it needs to stand out to customers, right? And you can also provide a call to action button. So a call to action button, multi, it, 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 you know, it motivates the customer to do something, just to do something to the post. So it motivates customers to buy now, click here, visit there, you know, call today, book online and all that. You also need to use photos and videos. Take a high resolution photo and add it to your post as it stand out and it back your call to action button. So the pictures could be in JPEG, they could be in uh, PNG, the videos could be, and you know, the format could be, you know, MP4, it could be FLV, it could be AVI, it could be, you know, 
you know, MKV and all that. So remember, we have different format of videos. So you need to ensure that the format is the one that is accepted for video. And the format that I've just mentioned are the ones that are accepted. So AVI, MP4, MKV, you know, MPG and all that. Also, you need to write a clear description. Provide as much information as possible. The information could be up to 1,500 words or characters, but at least the information should be elaborate so that somebody knows what you are doing. And then ensure you post, ensure that your posts are accurate. So this means you need not to have spelling mistakes in there, a lot of spacings, inappropriate grammar, and all that. So let us look at, you know, you know, how you can engage customers, how you can engage customers, how you can engage customers. And here are some of the examples. So we have overview. So the over here, here you can see people are talking about, you know, people are leaving reviews about, you know, about your product, uh, 4.9 reviews, uh, you know, and people are, are just talking about you and, uh, I'm just trying to read uh, some of them here. So somebody saying, somebody saying uh, it has been an awesome experience. So somebody is just talking about his experience just from the shop. Somebody also to, uh, saying a very good pizza, which you know somehow managed to be dirty and crispy uh, at the same time. The pizza also had a lot of you know toppings, which you know. So they are actually appreciating the you know the pizza that they ate. So that is engaging with your customers. So so gaining customer reviews can help your business to showcase customer testimonials in your marketing activities. Better understand what they're doing right and wrong as a business. Improve the visibility of your business on Google ranking, and also it can help you build trust. So, how can you how can you encourage customers to leave reviews? That is a very good question. How could you engage, you know, how can you or could you or what can you do to encourage your customers to read, to leave review? So remember I showed your business that had over 30 over, over 30 something review. So the big question is how do you uh, how can you as a business encourage customers to leave reviews? First, you can build a relationship with your customers by delivering excellent top-notch customer service. Also, you can ask them to review your business online. And you can also make it simple as possible for customers to leave reviews, add a URL to your customers and all that. But don't ask, don't pay customers to leave reviews. So paying customers to leave reviews is something that is not really uh, encouraged. So let them leave reviews, you know, you know, uh, based on the experience, based on the kind of service that they've gotten from you, based on their personal feelings, but not you paying them. Or you creating several accounts to uh, several accounts, and then you're leaving reviews for yourself. So you've created an email, you're saying, uh -huh, uh, you're saying something, something, but it's only you who's doing all this. That is really, really discouraged. So what could you do to, uh, to encourage customers to leave reviews? And I've just mentioned, yeah, so you can collect customer details, send feedback, you know, feedback surveys by email. You can also share, you know, feedback URLs, you know, you can also display feedback from customers to show this is a valued Customer. So we are we are almost done. We are just going to look at how can you leverage insights to grow your business. How can you maximally use insights that you'll be getting from Google My Business to help you grow your business? So the insight tool shows you how people find your business listing on the web how they use search and maps to find your listing and what they do once they find it. So insight can ultimately help you to understand your audience, understand how your audience behaves, adapts to their needs, 
reach new customers. And this can be achieved in a number of ways. So understanding your audience behavior. So as we earlier discussed, you can utilize insights to identify how customers find your listing on Google and what actions they take when they find you. In terms of how they find your listing, this can be broken down into, I know, maybe four broad steps. There is the direct searches, the one that you just go to your mobile phone and do a direct search. Then there's the discovery search, so a customer search for a category and you appear. And then there's the brand searches, so a customer search for your brand or a brand related to your business. And then there's the total searches, so the total number of direct discovery and branded searches that have been made. So what will you learn, or you as a business, what will you learn from the insights? One, how customers find your listing. Very, very important. How customers find your listing. Two, what did they, you know, what they do once they find you, once they're on your listing, or once they're on your page, what are they doing? How, how much time are they really spending on your listing? That shows interest. Where are they going or where are they coming from? Are they coming from Instagram to your listing? Or are they coming from Facebook to your listing? Or where are they coming from? Are they coming from a blog to your listing? You need to know where are they coming from? So when, so when people engage most with your content, when people engage most with the content so like time of the day so you know that in the morning and in the afternoon these are the these are times uh, you know maybe in the morning lunch time and in the evening so these are the times when people usually engage with a lot of posts so you need to know that is it in the evening or in the morning or at lunch time that usually people engage with the post this will also help you in scheduling your post for instance if you know that people engage with the content most in the evening then why would you post it in the morning if you know that that is where you're going to find most engagement? Also, you need to know how your engagement compares to similar listing. So you, you really need to remember that you have competitors all around and how are your competitors doing. So you need to compare, you know, are they doing better than me or I'm doing better than them? And if they're doing better than me, what do I need to do? Right. So. Do we have any question up to this point? Let me peep into you know the you know let me peep and see what you know what people are saying. Ah, perfect. So you know you know uh, guys are in in safe hands and and, uh, and there are in safe hands and questions are being uh, you know are being answered. So let me ask you this: What is your next step? what is your next step so as you think about your next step let me bring in uh, you know let me bring in um, sandra and eric just to say the closing remark uh, sandra and eric just to say the closing remark uh, because we are almost done so what is your next step having learned about google my business what is your next step are you going to fill the form so that you have a business listed and you start enjoying the benefits Are you going to uh, utilize the you know the insights that we've just talked about? All right, so uh, let me bring in um, let me bring in Sandra to just to give uh, his final remark before we. So Sandra, over back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Evans. This has been a very insightful um, training, and I hope that our SMEs have picked a lot from it and understood the benefits of using Google to further the visibility of their businesses. I would recommend that you reach out to your DMSs so that they can share with you forms, and then you can fill, and then we can start you on your way to um, registering your businesses and getting your... Um, your brand active on Google and more visible. There are so many benefits um, with 
uh, taking this step. There is so much that you can do with your business once you're visible online and once you're able to understand how to utilize these, these platforms. That's why these trainings are here. That's why these uh, trainers um, have availed their resources, that information to you. So don't hesitate to reach out to your DMSs. As the Ugandan SMEs, I would highly recommend this because, you know, during this pandemic, um, a lot of us are struggling to have people know where our businesses are or whether or not we are open. So this is a very, very good avenue for you to reach out and to connect with more people, build better relationships, and also, you know, get information about what you should be doing to grow your business, how, where, what focus areas you should be working hard on. So um, reach out to your DMSs, like I have said. They will share with you the links to the forms. They will also take you through um, how to fill in those forms, what type of information you need to provide, um, the things that you need to be having in place for you to be benefiting from, um, from this Google pro program. Um, those are my last words. I wish you all the best. In case you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. We are here at your disposal. We are here to answer all of your questions. We are here to support you and help you grow. Thank you very much, Evans. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Eric, run with it. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Evans, for the training. I think it has been uh, more benefit and insightful to the SMEs in Ghana. So I'm just going to ask uh, all the SMEs in Ghana, if maybe you have a question which was not well answered or you feel you need more clarification on that, can you reach your DMS and that will be sorted. If you think you need some more information on the same, do that as well. And uh, if you don't have a GMB profile, kindly add on the list that is being shared. Register and put all the business information and we are here to help you. Don't hesitate if you feel that you need more clarification. Thanks a lot, Evans. I think that... Uh, so, uh, sorry, Eric. Uh, so, uh, so guys, that has been my time. So thanks a lot for the Kenyan SMEs, uh, the, um, uh, the SMEs from Ghana, SMEs from Ethiopia for making this possible. Mine is just to urge you to really take advantage of the Google My Business tool. I uh, remember we've just we we we've just learned that it's it's uh, it's very free. Uh, all right. So before I say my final word, let me allow the gentleman to say hi. And this will be made of Hi, Evans. Go ahead. And, and uh, hi, everybody. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us in today's session. We are here to help you meet customers online. Even with the lockdowns, you can present your case to them. And to everybody that have joined us, courtesy of Digital Launchpad, we are, we are going to come down in where you are.